additional problems experienced and responses taken by the supply chain management sector due to Brexit. When the Brexit vote took place in 2016, the country tried to predict what problems and events may occur because of something as dramatic as the UK leaving the European Union. Some of the expectations were an increase on imports from the UK due to the sudden drop in value of sterling, a high demand for goods and services to occur in Ireland due to its status as a EU member state, drastic changes from UK suppliers to EU suppliers to limit our exposure to trade tariffs that had historically been risen sudden to prohibit Irish trade, and the redesign and restructure of Ireland's current supply chain to remove the UK completely. Later in 2019, the problems we expected from Brexit would include damages to the relationship with the US economy due to our reliance on the through UK trade route, the continued supply of medical devices to hospitals, disruptions to the supply line of Irish-based retail, new checks and controls on British goods that could possibly prohibit certain goods entering Ireland, strains on the relationship with Northern Ireland as a result of trade tariffs and the possibility of a hard border, which was also considered a major issue as a hard border would be a burden on the Irish and UK taxpayer and become a target for paramilitary groups. For these reasons and many more, Northern Ireland had become a major focus of the Brexit talks in Ireland. Until The most unforeseen problem to strike the Irish supply chain was COVID-19. However, even a global pandemic could not delay the irreversible divorce of the UK and Europe. Immediately the two issues combined to create the massive supply chain crisis we are currently in. Covid alone brought about a significant drop in factory productivity as countries where labour is commonly outsourced to such as India and China were ravaged by the illness. This exposed how fragile the best cost country model was to the supply chain. From delays in receiving goods, we moved to delays in processing goods as the Suez Canal was blocked by a freight ship, unbeknownst giving the world a taste of what was to come to Ireland. The Evergreen was ultimately just one of many instances of container dislocation where containers are being misplaced, abandoned, or simply returned to their origin point. Amidst everything, and possibly fueled by this, imports from UK have dropped. Ultimately, there are shortages in a range of areas. Shortages have been seen across the globe, including truck drivers to deliver goods, medical supplies for COVID relief, shipping containers, semiconductor chips used in technology and cars, industrial carbon dioxide used in fire extinguishers, fashion, and furniture. A case that perfectly shows the combination effect of COVID and Brexit have had on Irish supply chains is the Asia to Ireland supply chain. In 2020 15% of Ireland's total imports came from Asia, but we will see a drop in that as congestion in Europe caused by Brexit tariffs and exacerbated by Covid-19 create chaos. Shipping costs from Asia have reached an all-time high due to an extensive backlog, high demand in Europe, and Covid outbreaks stalling deliveries of raw materials leading to prices jumping as much as 30%. Due to Covid demands, Ireland lost in a vital opportunity to prevent or at least soften the truck driver shortage. General Manager of the Freight Transport Association, Aidan Flynn, has gone on record saying that he believes Ireland missed the opportunity to attract European truck drivers to Ireland through outreach advertisements. With everything considered, how do we respond? Luckily Ireland was prepared. In 2019 the Irish government was advising business owners to review their supply chain with focuses on costs and timelines, 
to check with the Revenue Commission for simplified customs clearance, and to register with relevant regulatory bodies. In addition, funding had been set aside in the event of a no-deal Brexit such as €170 million Euros for business, €185 million Euros to aid in compliance with new rules and regulations, and a €650 million Euros contingency fund. The government and Enterprise Ireland had also joined forces to provide financial and advisory aid. The supply chain reacted almost as predicted. Irish companies set up UK presence and vice versa, supplier substitutes were found, the chain shifted to a more regional import model, there was an introduction of higher inventory models across more warehouses, and technological improvements were implemented across the supply chain. UK companies are setting up sister companies or subsidiaries in the EU for the purpose of securing trade with no tariffs and less bureaucracy to speed up the sales process and delivery times. Likewise, Irish companies are looking to set up branches in the UK to gain a trading pool of sterling, to lessen customs issues on importing and exporting goods for redistribution and to avail of the UK VAT. With UK imports dropping, our EU imports are on the rise. The Irish retailer has simply subsidised their UK trade partners with EU trade partners. In some areas the Irish consumer doesn't notice the difference because the same product has been procured directly through the EU provider instead of going through a UK redistribution. The extra time it takes to ferry goods directly from Europe to Ireland is no longer an issue due to the time delays that have arisen from the British tariffs, but now it has the advantage of avoiding the extra UK border taxes. With all these favouring factors, direct trade with Europe is sure to see a favourable rise. Despite the shorter wait times, the regional model was viewed as far too costly to work for Irish businesses, until Covid-19 struck. Now the regional model has shown its benefits on a larger scale, such as reliable communication between businesses due to smaller time difference, less complex supply chain that enables more transparency, a factor that is favoured by the conscious consumer more reliable pricing when trading within a zone of shared currency, a smaller carbon footprint, and general more resilience in comparison to the best price model. In order to save money on warehouse costs, retailers would order the minimal stock needed to operate for a certain period, with the expectation that when their stock drops to a particular point they can place the next restocking order and the goods would arrive when the previous stock had depleted. Brexit and the resulting delays to the supply chain have exposed the faults in this supply chain and retailers now stock more than is necessary. In this way they can continue to do business even when their stock has dwindled. Improvements in tech have been accelerated due to Covid and the supply chain management sector has benefited at almost every step. Cloud computing has made the literal management of the supply chain more accessible as all relevant information is kept in a single storage that is accessible from multiple devices, meaning time need not be spent going from one information database and transferring it to another. AI and robotics have standardized and raised efficiency. Demand forecasting technology has also advanced to the point that nexus restock levels can be estimated near nine months before the items even enter the country. In conclusion, the current supply chain crisis should have been much worse. Ireland's Brexit preparation would have been more than sufficient had the Covid pandemic not struck. However, the pandemic made us aware of the flaws in our supply chain internationally. As the entire world was reworking their supply chain to combat the pandemic, Ireland benefited from the acceleration in supply chain technology and additional supply chain routes opening to move goods, making the transition from UK suppliers to EU suppliers more viable. In this way, Ireland has benefited from the pandemic.
It is in one's own opinion that Ireland's supply chain crisis is being dramatised and the country will struggle, but will continue to thrive.